Hey guys, so here we have an exhaust valve assembly, obviously completely disassembled for a 2002 Suzuki RM250. All this is going on to this cylinder here, which is going on to this engine. Got everything all cleaned up, looking sweet. So I'll be walking you guys through assembly and how to set it up and adjust it. Now it looks like we've got quite the mess going on here. But I promise you guys, once we get going, it's actually pretty straightforward. So this valve is the exact same for a 2001 and 2002 RM250. 96 to 00 is basically the same. And then 03 to 07 is a bit different design, but still the same concept. So this video should be pretty helpful for 96 to 07. And it always helps to have a parts diagram on hand. This shows where every little piece goes. I printed this one out from Rocky Mountain. Before we start, always a good idea to have everything cleaned up and uh, free of carbon, check for any damage. Cylinder is spotless. Went through and recoded these pieces here. The black is a Cerakote Micro Slick. Helps with friction, makes them last a bit longer. And then at the same time, I coated the covers in a Cobalt Cerakote just to make them look good. So with that, why don't we get started? Looks like the first thing we'll need to assemble here is the actual valve into this plate. It should just slip in like so. Line up the arms with the valve and then it should just slide right into the cylinder. Oh, we forgot our lube. Always a bad day when you forget the lube. This thing should just pop right in. There we go. We've got a couple Allen head screws that hold this plate assembly in. Throw some blue Loctite on them to keep them into place. Now we've got to figure out where these two arms and the shaft go. Start with this one. Looks like it goes right there. Locks in between these two arms. Have to pull those out to get it in place. Goes in like that. And then this one goes on to the actual shaft pops into those grooves then we've got the shaft that goes through the whole thing and I'm looking at the diagram it goes from the clutch side to the flywheel side pop that thing on through actually got a little spring that goes here there's a little hole it pops into right here there's a little hole on this shaft that the spring goes into so you know what it's gonna be easier to get that hole in first there we go, that's much simpler. Pop it into here, and then go ahead and slide that shaft on through. Like butter. Man, it's nice having everything all clean and fresh. I hate rebuilding stuff that's all dirty. Just line up this hole with the shaft. Got a little Allen head screw that goes in there. Let's go ahead and test, make sure this thing's working right. Yep. Now with the valve assembled and uh, working, you can see the function of the valve. So when it opens up, that increases the size of the exhaust port, increases the amount of air coming out, helps with power at high RPM. And then when you close it, that decreases the size, creates some back pressure and helps out with throttle response at low RPM. So yeah, these things are very helpful on a two stroke. Yeah, just playing with this thing by hand. Feels like that micro slick made a good difference in the amount of friction. Everything works really smoothly and looks a lot cleaner. So, got a thumbs up in my book so far. Now, I should mention there is a certain direction the spring should go on. So, the side with the bend tighter to the coils goes on this side. But once you mess with it, you'll see the proper direction. But just something to be aware of there. Now, we're going to need to assemble this side of the cylinder, or this side of the valve. We've got all these pieces here. I took it all apart to clean it up, kind of shine it up. So we're going to start with the spring and the inner plate. With these parts, you can refer to the diagram, see how they go together, or just look at the wear marks here, how things line up. So we're going to bring this side of it over to the other end of the plate, all the way around. Like so. Now you're going to want to keep a good hold on it. This thing could be flying off into outer space if you let it go. Get the spacer in between here. Just to lock everything together. Oh shoot. See what I'm saying there? You got to get a 
good strong grip on it. All right, we got it back together. So we're gonna set this up on the end of the shaft here. Now you guys might be able to see this. There's a little slot here on the end of the shaft. We're gonna line up the inner plate with that slot. There we go. And then we've got this plate that goes on the outside. Let's pop this thing in. Then we just got the retaining plate that goes on the outside and keeps everything in place. Now, for some reason, this plate is really sloppy on the shaft. It's like there's a gap between the wash and the plate. I'm gonna have to dig into this. So it looks like the plate sits lower than the actual shaft. So I think what I'm gonna do here is find a washer that fits around the shaft to, to try to push that plate down. Let's see if this washer will do. Oh yeah, that should work. Oh yeah, she's nice and tight now. No more sloppy secondhand parts. Now while we're on this side, we're gonna install the secondary valve. I believe that's what it's called. You wanna make sure you have the right valve. It goes on the right side of the cylinder. You can see it's marked right there. And this hole is gonna need to line up with the pin down inside of there. Get her all lubed up and drop her in until that pin goes in. There we go. Then we've got a little spacer here, a little collar. That goes over the end of the shaft. And to cap it off, got the cover here. Come to think of it, you can't even see this cover when it's all together. Oh well, at least it'll look cool when you tear it apart. Actually, I'm gonna need to put the uh, O-ring on there and then just drop this guy right in place. Oof. Now that's it for the right side. The left side is basically the same. Also not a bad idea to work some oil into these roller bearings here. Before I cap this side, I thought I'd show you guys how this exhaust valve system works. It's kind of like a two-step or two-stage system. So you have the main valve right here that works in the exhaust port here. So when you move the shaft, you can see that valve inside working, kind of open up the port. And then when you move the shaft all the way, that opens up the side or the secondary valves. You can see the side valves don't open until you fully turn the shaft. So halfway opens the main valve and all the way opens the side valves. So pretty cool system. Now to verify those secondary valves are installed correctly and they're working right, just open up the shaft. You can look inside the exhaust port and see that they're opening fully. Now we've got a few more things to install on this side of the cylinder, and that would be the adjuster for the power valve. And believe it or not, you can actually control the power of the engine or change the power of the engine with these parts here. They basically hold tension on the exhaust valve itself and gives you control over when that valve opens. So first up, we've got this little collar. We're gonna line it up with a spring here and then goes into uh, this hole right here. And in the end of the shaft, there's gonna be another slot and you wanna make sure all that lines up. You wanna twist it around until it lines up right there. And then on goes the cap. The slot you wanna line up with the spring once again. So I'll give you guys a little demonstration of how that tensioner works. So right now we have no tension on the valve and you can notice here the valve, the center valve here, it kind of binds up it doesn't want to retract all the way on its own. And that's why you need the tensioner. And also that gives you the ability to kind of change the power curve on the bike too, when you're able to control the tension on this valve here. So you can see it doesn't want to return. Let's add a little tension to it. We'll do that by turning this adjuster clockwise. We're gonna go a quarter turn. See how fast that retracts now. Now, basically how this adjuster changes the power curve of the bike is the more tension you put on the spring, the more you turn it clockwise, the longer the power valve is gonna stay open. So that's gonna increase the pull on the low end and the hit will be later on. You know, a two stroke has that hit. That'll be later on in the power band. And then when you turn, when you have less tension, that is gonna open the power valve sooner 
so it's going to have less low end pull and then that hit will come sooner on so if you do a lot of track riding you may want to have less tension on the spring maybe only a quarter turnout like we have right here and then if you do primarily trail riding maybe go like a quarter i mean a half a turn clockwise now you can go ahead and mess around with the tension on this thing you can go a quarter turnout half turnout three quarter turnout i probably wouldn't go much more than three quarter but you do want some tension on the spring there so that way the power valve doesn't get sticky. Now that power valve adjustment isn't gonna make a huge, huge difference, but definitely something you can play with, dial in to your liking. I think it'd be pretty fun too. Now, I know you guys are curious how I got this cylinder looking new again. Actually, it looks better than new. Well, first off, the bore was all jacked up. It had a bunch of pitting damage from detonation, all scraped up. And so I sent it out to Power Seal USA. They went through, TIG welded that damage. I'll pop a few pictures on the screen to show what it looked like before. They, uh, so they TIG welded it, smoothed it out, replated the bore to fix all those scrapes and scratches. Got it all ready to rip again, looking good. And then for the exterior, look how shiny that is. I had that vapor blasted or vapor honed by my buddy Josh Traxler. Did an amazing job. This thing is going to look freaking sweet up here on the engine. Now, if you guys are in need of any cylinder repair work or vapor blasting, I will have both Power Steel USA and Josh linked down below. Go hit them up. Alrighty, the valve is all back together. That really wasn't too bad, was it? All we got to do is slap the covers back on, get this thing up on the engine, and we'll be up and running. Now, it is possible to rebuild the valve or reassemble it with the cylinder on the engine. However, I would recommend pulling the cylinder off. That way you can go through, clean everything up, get it all fresh again. It's always nice to start with a uh, clean slate. So that's it for the power valve assembly. Hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video coming soon.